Glory, glory, glory. It's a good day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yes. God wants to heal you now. Can you believe that? Can you believe that God wants to heal you now? Amen. I can. You know why I can believe it? Because I know my father. I know my father. And I know that he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. I'm trying to do something right here, so I know my. Okay, so it's telling me here. Okay, so now let's see what it's going to do. Hallelujah. Here we go. Glory to God. There we go. It caught on. Okay. So this is sideways. Okay, so let's see. Can we straighten that up? I'm going to have to come out of here for a second, then I'm going to come right back in. So you're going to have to be patient, okay? Thank you. Okay, we're coming right back now. Just give me a second. I'll be right with you guys in just a minute. I guess uh, this this one right here just kind of went haywire on me. And I'd like for everyone to get the word tonight. So just be patient with me just a minute. I appreciate that. Glory to God. Because I know that you want the word and I know they want the word too on the other program. So we're going to make sure they can get it also. Hallelujah. One more. There we go. There we go. This thing is acting up again. Well, just keep wanting to act up on me. I don't understand it. So we're going to have to... Let's see what's going on. Is that better? Let's check it out and see. Glory to God. Okay, well, whether it's good or not, we're going to go ahead and go, go with it. 
It may be upside down or sideways or whatever, but it's it's just the system. For some reason, they do that sometimes, and we just gonna just gonna believe that that everything is gonna work out all right. Okay. So can y- y'all can still see me? That's that's good enough. But anyway, praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Lord God, for the, your word. We thank you, Father, that your word shall go forth tonight without any hindrances of any force of any kind. And truth will be revealed to our hearts, and we will know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. And Father, we covenant with you now that we're going to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all that agree with that say it. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Well, welcome to our nightly meeting. And I'm glad that you all are joining me. Amen. It's just an honor to see all you coming aboard. Amen. To hear the word of God. And some of you, I believe that as you release your faith, you're going to receive exactly what you're believing for. Amen. Because God wants to heal you today. Oh, yes. God wants to heal you right now. Amen. Regardless of where you're at, what you're doing, God wants to heal you right now. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed. Amen. He healed. We're going to look at Acts chapter 10. Amen. We're going to start out tonight in Acts chapter 10. Okay, Acts chapter 10. Come on, book. Glory to God. There we go. Sometimes these pages stick together and you have to get through them. But that's okay. We're getting there. Acts chapter 10. And look at verse number 38. Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. I guess you already knew where I was going, but that's good. I'm glad you know. So that way, that showed me that you've been studying. Now, the, now let me just share something with you now. Because, see, if you're really one of those that are believing God for your healing, then you don't want to be here with me right now without your Bible. Because, you see, you need to see the Word of God for yourself. And you need to read the Word of God for yourself. Because, you see, that's going to help your faith to be established. Because most people, when they get healed through the teaching of the word, they get healed because they believe the word. And if you don't have your Bible to read right along with me, then it's going to be hard for you to truly believe the word. Amen. So get your Bible. And we're going to go through some scriptures today. Amen. And at the same time, I want you to release your faith. I want you to release your faith for your healing. I I can release my faith in agreement with you. Amen. But you are the one that God is looking to. Amen. Because most people in the Bible were healed because of their own faith. Remember with the one with the issue of blood? He said, daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Amen. He said, thy faith has made you whole. Amen. So we know that he wants us healed, but we have a part to play in this. Everything, every blessing and every promise that God has given us is conditional. It's conditional. Amen. So if we don't do our part, then we can't blame God when we don't get what we're believing for. So we have to, we have to come together in the word. And then we have to believe the word. Then we have to receive the word as though God is speaking to us personally. Amen. Because the word of God is going to speak to your heart. The way you receive is going to be the way it's going to minister to you. That's why it's so important that you get your own Bible and that you begin to read right along beside me. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm going through scriptures, you get your Bible and you read, the, you read the scriptures right along beside me. Amen. Because it's important for you. I want to see you healed. I want to see you delivered. I want to see you set free. 
from everything that the enemy has tried to uh, 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 put upon you. Amen. Now, it's up to you now. Do you want to be free? Because God wants you free. God wants you free. And I know that you, and I know you want to be free too. I know if I was sick, if I was down and out, I would want to be free. I would not want anything to hold me back from receiving my healing, my breakthrough, my miracle, my touch from heaven. Amen. Because I know that God has made all things available for me. And he's already, the price has already been paid. It was paid through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He paid the ultimate price for my deliverance, for my healing. Amen. Everything that I need is already been provided for through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so as I come to the knowledge of that and begin to walk in that knowledge, I'm going to experience God's goodness and God's mercy because his mercies is renewed daily, daily. Amen. His mercies is renewed daily. Glory to God. And so I want to encourage you to be strong in the Lord, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. We're going to put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. I just not. Amen. That's okay. We're going to put on the whole armor of God. And we're going to believe the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're going to stand firm knowing that what God has promised, he's able to bring it to pass. Amen. And so, my friend, my brother and sister, just know that when God's word is being spoken and He's only expecting you to, all the thing he's expecting you to do is believe the word. Is believe the word. Allow the word to minister to your heart. Open up your heart and let the word of God minister to you. Amen. That's all God is expecting. He wants you to open up your heart and let the word minister to you. Because the word of God has the ability to bring you into a place of great expectation. Amen. But that happens when we believe the word. When we believe the word. Amen. Jesus wants to heal you right now. Period. That's it. He wants to heal you right now. Amen. And so when we, if we can understand what he's saying to us and allow him to do that, friend, we are on our way up. We are on our way up. Hallelujah. We're on our way up because that's where life begins. It begins when you know the will of God. I believe that God wants to do it now. What about you? Do you believe that? Do you believe that God wants to do it right now? Amen. Amen. I tell you, he does. He does. He really does. He wants to do it right now. And so when we come together, let's just believe. So now he says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all. Amen. And healing all. As he went about doing good and healing all, notice what he said, for God was with him. For God was with him. So he went about doing good and healing all that were sick. Amen. Now, I believe that God wants us to understand that this was a pattern for us to follow. Amen. As children of God. Amen. As children of God, he had laid the pattern for us all to follow. And how, what, what pattern was that? That we would be able to experience God's goodness and God's mercy, amen, and his grace, for his grace is sufficient for us, amen. Now, what's going what's gonna to stop us from, from getting healed? When you begin to be release your faith, the devil's going to come and he's going to begin to speak to you. He's going to tell you, now you know that stuff ain't going to work. You've been, you have tried that many times and you know it, it, it never worked for you. What makes you think it's going to work now? That's the way the devil is going to come against you. 
Amen. He's going to make you think that there's nothing going to help you in the sit in your in your in your situation. He's going to make you think that that you are a lost case. Amen. But I want to tell you I want to tell you something different because I know that God I know that God's love for you is greater than anything that the devil can cause you to uh, doubt and, and, and not believe because God won't, when you put your heart, when you put your heart in, in the things of God and when you begin to trust God, when you begin to believe God, God will all, I mean, all God would, God would, would just begin to shower down his blessings upon you. God loves you right where you are. Amen. You may not understand it, but God loves you right where you are. Amen. Because all things do work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So when we come together in Christ, we come together knowing that we are not alone, that we are not alone, and that all things do work together for good to them that love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. And I want to ask you a question today. Do you really love him? Do you really love him? Well, then you are one of the ones that are called according to his purpose. Glory to his name. Amen. So what you gonna do? What you gonna do about that? You gonna you gonna you gonna trust him? You gonna allow him to do what he wants to do in your life? Amen. And then you gonna let you gonna let his heart. You gonna let your heart. You gonna let your heart be be uh be be in tune with his heart. How are you gonna do that? By the word. You see, the Bible says, "Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God." And then he says in Mark chapter eleven, verse number twenty-two. Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Amen. So it's all there in the word of God. And it's meant for us to receive it. It's meant for us to hear it, believe it, and receive it. So now what is, we, we, can't, we can't do it without God. Amen. No matter what we try, we can do a lot of things, but we can't receive our healing without God because he is the healer. Jesus Christ is the healer. Amen. And he wants to heal you. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. He wants you to experience his goodness and his mercy. Amen. He wants you to know that without him, you can do nothing. But in him, you can do all things for cause great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if God be for you, then who can be against you? Amen. If God be for you, who can be against you? God has made all grace abound towards you and you always have an all sufficiency in all things and do abound to every good work. God's word will work for you when you work the word. Amen. God's word will work for you when you work the word. So when you work the word, you can expect God to begin to do that which he wants to do in your life. God wants to bring you to that place of expectancy. He wants you to come to that place where you will begin to experience his goodness and his mercy. For his mercy is renewed day by day by day. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So my friend, just be, in, just be patient because God is working on your behalf to bring you to that place of inner peace and inner healing. Amen. Because that's what he wants. That's what he wants for you. He wants you to experience his goodness. He wants you to experience his, his mercy. He wants you to experience his miracle working power in your life. Why? Because he wants you to become a living testimony for him. He wants you to not only get it, receive it, but he wants you to go and tell it when, when it happened, when it happened for you. Amen. Because when it happened, you're going to know that God has touched you and you're going to know that no matter where you are, you're not alone because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Because if God be on your side, then who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So now, notice what he said again in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse number 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and notice what he said, and healing all. And healing all. So now do we know that Jesus, he he loved the he loved humanity so much that he went about doing good and healing all, healing all. Amen. So now let's look here. Let's look right here now 
And, and, and let's look right here at uh, John chapter 14 and verse number and verse number 12. Amen. Because you see, if God, if Jesus went about doing good and healing all, now notice what he said right here in John 14, verse number 12. It's very, very important that we see and hear what the, what the word of God is saying. Notice what he said in verse number 3. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Amen. So greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. How many of you know that God wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask, think, or imagine? God wants to touch your life. Amen. He wants to touch your life. He wants to bring you to a place, glory to God, of inner healing and inner peace. God wants to do exceedingly abundant above all that you can ask, think, or imagine. And how's he going to do it? He's going to do it through your faith. He's going to do it through your faith. Remember, faith worketh by love. And God loves you so much. So his faith is at work on your behalf. Now, he wants you to connect your faith with his faith. Amen. Because you see, God's faith never fail. And what about yours? See, you just like me. So we are human beings. We make mistakes sometimes. But at the same time, when God looks upon us, he looks upon us with compassion and his grace is extended. Amen. And we experience his goodness and his mercies. It's our season, brothers and sisters, to enter into the God's rest. Amen. So now he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. Because I go to my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then he said in verse number 14, if ye shall ask anything in my name, he said, I will do it. Amen. He said, I will do it. So uh, he's expecting us to ask, but he's expecting us to ask in faith. Remember what Romans chapter 10, verse 17 said, but with uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, then we have an obligation to take the word of God and begin to apply the word of God, read the word of God, and allow the word of God to minister to our hearts. Amen. Healing is not something that is hard for God to do. Matter of fact, it's just it's as easy as as anything else. You know that salvation, people, uh, when people get saved, they don't get saved just because just because they uh, 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 want to. Or just because they get saved because they hear the truth. Amen. They hear the word of God. God touches their lives. Amen. And they receive what God has done for them. How do they receive it? They receive it by faith. Born again is what God wants for every man, woman in this world. Because every man and woman was created in his image and after his likeness. And he wants them all to come under his love protection. Amen. And that's through accepting Jesus Christ in their hearts as their Lord and Savior. Not only are you saved, but you are delivered. Amen. Not only are you saved, but you are delivered. And not only are you saved and delivered, amen, because you see, he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Amen. So if we were healed, then that means that we we are healed. And if we are healed, that means that he have already borne our pain and our sickness. So why should we bear something that he has already took taken? Amen. Why should we why would we want to take it back from him when he's already taken it? Amen. So we need to let him we need to let him uh, do what he come to do. He came to to save our. He came to deliver us and to save us and to and to heal us. Amen. He came to to save us, deliver us, and to heal us. That's what he came for, folks. And it's already been done. 
if you read the book of Isaiah chapter 53, he said, Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But it goes on to say, But he was wounded for our transgressions. See, that's, there go our sins right there. There go our sins. Amen. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Amen. Now notice what he said. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, the stripes that came across his back, the Bible says we are healed. Now, if we are healed in, in, in the book of Isaiah, according to what the word of God said, we are healed. And then if you look at 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse number 24, let's look at that real quick. 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse number 24, glory to God. Here we go. It says, who his own self, talking about Jesus, who his own self, notice what he said, bear our sins, that go our sins again. Who bore our sins? Jesus bared our sins. Jesus bared our sins. Now notice what he said. He bared our sins. In his own body. In his own body. Now he not only bear our sins in his own body. Amen. But he buried our sicknesses in his own body too. Amen. So if he buried our sins, how do we get saved? We got saved because Jesus bore our sins. And we repented and we accepted that he, we accepted the fact that he bore our sins. Amen. So we, when we accepted that, we was Save, we was delivered, we was free from the penalty of sin. Amen. Now the same thing is for our sicknesses. He not only bear our sin, look at first Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He not only bear our sins, amen. But notice what he said in verse 2, verse number 20, chapter 20, chapter 2, verse number 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 24. You need to read right along with me because you see faith coming by hearing. You need to read right along with me and you because you need this word to minister to you. You don't need to be a spectator. You need to be one that's going to participate in what God is wanting to do right now in your life. God wants to heal you now. Jesus wants to heal you now. Amen. So notice that in 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse number 24, who is own self talking about Jesus bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Amen. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Then it says, by whose stripes, by whose stripes ye were healed. See, now, now that's past tense. Amen. Now notice, he bore our sins. And he buried out, and, he, and, he, and, and, and by his stripes we were healed. So not only did he bear our sins on the tree, on the cross, but he bared our sicknesses as well. Amen. He did them both at the same time. When was that? When he went to the cross, he took our sicknesses and he took our sins to the cross that we may be free from them. Amen. That we may be free from them. Now, Let's look at, let's look back here now. Let's look back here now at the book of glory to God. Let's go back to uh, uh, Isaiah, not, yeah, Isaiah once again. Let's go back to Isaiah once again and verse number 50, 50, 53. Now this time, let's look at verse number one. Verse number one said, who had believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. Are y'all with me? He was a man. They said a man of sorrow. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. In other words, pain. Pain. Now, whose who's pain has he been acquainted with? He's been acquainted with our pain, with our sicknesses, with our pain. 
with our discomfort in our bodies. Amen. Glory to God. So he was, verse number three, Isaiah chapter 53, verse number three. He was despised and rejected of men, of man of sorrow. Glory to God. And acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our face from him. He was despised and we esteem him not. In verse number four, it's so plain. It said, surely, my God. Verse number four is so it's a it's a it's a powerful scripture, folks. It's a powerful scripture. And if we if when we can uh, see what God is saying to us in the word, we will see that the word of God has the ability to bring us to a place of inner peace and inner healing. God wants to deliver you from the powers of darkness. Amen. Sicknesses and diseases. God wants to heal you. Do you want to be healed? He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. Amen. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so now, that's better. Amen. So now, let's look at something else. Look, look at the book of Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Now notice what it says right here in Matthew chapter 8. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse number 15 said, and he, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Amen. Glory to God. Now, now look at verse number 16. When he, and when Eden was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick. And healed all that were sick. My, my God, Jesus loved to heal his people. He wants to heal you right now. He wants to heal you right now. Amen. Look at verse number 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmity and bear our sicknesses. He took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. So who took our infirmity? Jesus did. Who bared our sicknesses? Jesus did. Amen. When he went to the cross, he took our infirmities and bared our sicknesses. That we, if he bared them, then friend, why do we have to bear something that someone else has already bared for us? We don't have that obligation. It already has been taken care of. Our sicknesses have been taken care of. It's been paid for. Our pain, our suffering has already been, been paid for. The penalty has already been paid. Jesus paid it all at the cross. He paid it all at the cross. Amen. So now, if he paid it at the cross, what are you, what, why should we want to continue to hold on to something that he's already taken care of. No, folks, we need to let it go. We need to release it and let it go. Why? Because he bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases. And he said, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. We are healed. If, if, if this is true, then he's expecting us to do something. What is that he's expecting out of us? He expecting out of, he, what he's expecting out of us is to Take his word and not take it for granted. But take his word literally, believe it as though it has just been written to you as a letter from him. God wants to heal you now. He wants to touch you right now. He wants to set you free right now, right where you are. Amen. It doesn't matter what the devil's tried to do. We know that God is has the final say so. He has the final say so. Amen. And so we're just gonna keep trusting in him. Now let's turn to the book of Mark, chapter five. I talked about that very very little uh at the beginning. Amen. But in Mark chapter five, look at verse number. I just look here, uh, Mark chapter 5, 
Glory to God. In verse number 22. This whole chapter is powerful. It's, it's a wonderful chapter here. Mark chapter 5 is a wonderful chapter. Amen. Healing of the demon possessed man and so forth and so on. And then down here at the verse number 22. Down here verse number 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogues, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he felt at his feet. Now notice, it was a ruler of the synagogue that saw Jesus. And when he saw him, the Bible said that he fell at his feet. He fell at his feet. Amen. What was he doing at his feet? Let's look. Let's read on. Verse number 23. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand, thy hands upon her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Amen. His daughter was at the point of death, and he prayed. He came and fell down at Jesus' feet and began to pray, Lord, come to my house and heal my daughter. Just come and lay your hands upon her. Amen. For she can be healed and she shall live. Can you, can you believe that this man coming to Jesus with this attitude? So apparently he must knew something about this man, Jesus. Why else would he have come to Jesus expecting Jesus to go to his house and lay his hands upon his daughter? Amen. He knew something about this man, Jesus. And we should all learn something about Jesus. Amen. We should learn how much he loves us. We should learn how much he cares for us. We should learn that as we trust him, that he will honor his word in our lives. If we believe him, it, that, that we, can, we can walk in divine health. And healing. Amen. How is that going to happen? It's going to happen through faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1. And the evidence of things not seen. You may not can see your healing right now. Manifesting. You may not believe that it can right now. But let me tell you. All things are possible to him that believe. Amen. All God is looking for someone that will believe him. He's looking for someone that will take him at his word. He's not, that's, that's a, that's all, there's already a, enough people doubting him. Uh, there's already enough people that, that don't understand that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. And it said that no man can come to the father, but by me. So when we come to Jesus, we need to come to him realizing that he is the way to eternal life. Not only to eternal life, to, but also to our health and healing. Look with me in John, before we finish right here, we're going to put our finger right here in Mark chapter 5. But let's go to John right now real fast. John chapter 1. Then we're going to come right back over here to Mark chapter 5. But John chapter 1 right now, just, just, it's just in my spirit. So let's go there. Amen. Now notice what he said in John chapter 1. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. See, this is why it's so important that we take the word of God and meditate upon the word of God. And, and, and tell you the truth. Uh, if you be, it, really, folks, if you really believe in God for your healing now, then you need to get your Bible. And you need to go along with me in these scriptures because you see, you need to show God that you're serious. Just sitting there, listen to me. That's good, but that's not good enough. You need your Bible because you need to read the scriptures that I'm reading. You need to apply the word of God that I'm reading. You need to to join me in the word as I'm reading the scripture. You need to read the scripture with me. Amen. Show God that you are truly interested in receiving a touch from him tonight. Amen. Because you can be healed now. Jesus wants to heal you right now. And he's, he don't have to wait until you, till the, till the, till you go to the doctor and the doctor diagnose you. He can 
God can heal you right now without your diagnosis. Amen. He can touch you. He can cause everything that the enemy has meant for evil concerning you. He could cause it all to be turned around for the glory of God. Hallelujah. How you doing, Miss Heidi? God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. So now in John chapter one, John gospel chapter one, he said, and verse number two said, he said, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Notice what he said, all things were made by him. Not only was all things were made by him, you was created by him also. Amen. In Genesis chapter one and verse number 26, and God created men. God said, let us create men in our own image and after our likeness. And then he said, let them have dominion over all the work of my hand. Amen. God knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly where we all are. And he knows exactly how to minister to us. Amen. So sometimes when it don't seem like it's going your way, just think that God can send labors into your pathway that is capable and to, to speak a word of encouragement into your heart that will cause you to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And in doing so, you're going to wake up and you're going to know that God has touched you through that person. Now that, that God has your undivided attention. How is that? Because you allowed that person that God sent to you to minister to you. Amen. So that now God has your undivided attention. And if you follow the instructions of that person that God has sent to you, you find out that every need is met according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not turn you away when you come to him in need of help. God is going to walk with you. He's going to talk with you. He's going to bring you to that place of hope. He won't bring you to that place of inner peace. He won't bring you to that place where you are satisfied deep within. Amen. Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that we all come to the newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now, so now when we look at this now, let's see here. In John chapter, we're still in John chapter one, still in John chapter one. Now let's look right here in John chapter one and let's see right here in verse number five. Now verse number four, now verse number four says, and though in him, in him was life. Notice what he said, in him was life. Tony, how you doing, Tony? Good to see you, man. Glory to God. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Amen. Notice we said in him was life and the life was the light of men. What life is he referring to? He's talking about the life of the word. Amen. Because remember he said in, in, in verse number one, he said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And so we see here that the word is full of life, full of the life and the nature of God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Amen. So if the word is full of the life and the nature of God, how much more do you think that God's life and nature can flow into your body when you believe the word of God? Amen. See, God created that body. God created that body. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. God created that body and he breathed the breath of life in that body. Don't you know that God can also repair that body when that body begin to when that body begin to break down when sickness and disease begin to come upon you when you return to when you turn your heart to toward God when you begin to acknowledge God I have lived a life that I know you wasn't pleased with but God I'm asking you to forgive me and God if you would just 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 heal my body right now I will serve you all the days of my life I will serve you the rest of the days of my life how many have made that statement to God and you went back on your word? Amen. Time you started to feel better, time you started to, to, to experience his goodness and his mercy, you went back on your word. I know we, we all make mistakes, but if we would repent and ask God, Father, I know I told you this, I, I'm, I'm asking you to forgive me. Amen. 
and just return to God. Return to God. And then God is going to return to you. Amen. So now notice what he said right here. We're still in John chapter 1 right now. Then we're going to go back to Mark chapter 5. Amen. But right here in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1. Now let's look at verse number verse number uh, uh, 5. It said, And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. See, God is looking for believers. He's not looking for people that want to challenge his word and 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 try to uh, cause his word to be void in the life of those that are truly trying to uh, uh, come to the knowledge of who God really is. Amen. Jesus Christ, he didn't come to save the 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 the, the well people, the, the healthy people, he came to, to save, he came to save the sick and the lost. Amen. God wants you to be delivered. God wants you to be free. God wants you to experience his goodness and his mercies right now. Amen. Because his mercies are renewed daily. Are you ready for his mercies to be extended toward you? His mercies are renewed daily. Amen. So now let's look right here. Let's look right here in John chapter 5, John, excuse me, John chapter 1. Now let's look at verse number, look at verse number uh, 8. Amen. Verse number 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Amen. See, John wasn't the light, but he came to bear witness of the light. Well, who was the light? Jesus was the light, the Lamb of God was the light of the world. Amen. He is the light of the world. Hallelujah. Now notice what it says in verse number nine. And that light, that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. You see, there are so many people, there are so many people that thinking that they really know him but if you if you try to hold a conversation concerning him, you find out that they really don't know him. And that can be changed. All you have to do is just open up your heart and just allow him in and he will reveal himself to you that you can know him, that you can know him. Because if you're trying to pray and you're trying to receive, you're trying to receive the, the word of God. You're trying to receive, you're trying to read this Bible without the born again, a regeneration of the human spirit. Then this book is just like a, just any other book to you. But the moment you open up your heart and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Now that book is going to begin to come alive. It's going to begin, those words in that book, going to be, it's going to begin to minister life and health and healing to all your flesh. Because remember what it says in Proverbs chapter, chapter 4 and verse number 20. It said, My son, attend to my words and incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine, from, from thine, eyes, from thine, from thine eyes. Keep in the midst of thine heart. Amen. Then he said, For they are life. To those that find him, talking about his word. He said that my words are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. So the word of God, my friend, my brother and sister, it has the ability to restructure our body. Because you see, God made our bodies. Amen. Now, the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse number 11, it says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. See, and all you have to do is just receive him. Receive him. See, you are, you, every one of us belongs to God. Every one of us belongs to God. But he came to his own, and his own received him not. Just think, if we would receive him. Amen. If all of us would just come together and just receive him. It would, it would revolutionize our lives. It would literally transform our lives. We will begin to see him just as he is. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie, 
nor the son of man that he should repent. Had not God said it and should he not make it good? He's, I'm telling you, God wants to reveal himself. He won't reveal himself in his word to your heart. Look what it says in verse number 12. John chapter 1, verse number 12. And it says, And as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. See, we can't become the sons of God until we open up our heart and receive Jesus in our heart. That's when we become the sons of God. And that's when the word is going to begin to take on flesh. Amen. As you read that word, the word is going to begin to minister to your heart. The word is going to begin to set you free from the powers of darkness because the word has the ability to bring you to a place of inner peace and healing. Amen. Notice what it said, verse number 13, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, but of but of but the will of God. But of the will of God. Amen. Verse number 14 is very important. And it says, and the word was made flesh. Amen. Remember what it said in verse number one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse number 14 said, and the word was made flesh. Amen. The word was made flesh. What do you mean? How is the word, is how is the word God, and God was in the word, and the word was made, and the word is God. And then in verse number 14, it said, and the word be, was made flesh. Well, when was the word made flesh? The moment you begin to, to, to meditate upon that word, the moment you begin to allow that word to go, to, to go not, not to just linger around in your mind, but as you, medit as you read the word of God, as you meditate upon the word of God, that word began to drop into your spirit. And when that word began to drop into your spirit, it began to illuminate you, your inward parts. Amen. The word comes alive. The word comes alive. Now, folks, when that word comes alive, it takes on the nature of God. Because you see, in God, there is no sickness. In God, there is no diseases. In God, there is health and healing. Amen. For this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So our healing will manifest in our bodies when we can simply take God at his word. Simply take God at his word. So many times we 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 come to this point, we come to the point of going to, to accept God as his word, but then that that demon spirit that's sitting upon your shoulder there, he began to tell you, oh, you know that word, you can't believe that stuff. You've been listening to that stuff all your life and ain't, it haven't worked for you yet. What make you think it's going to work for you now? This is the devil talking, amen? But see, but the angel's on the other shoulder right there. The angel's on the other shoulder. He's saying, he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth, amen? Amen. So we got to we got we got to come to make a decision. Who are we going to listen to? The one that's that that is on your the one that's on your shoulder that is, that is telling you that it's not going to work. The one that's telling you that you've been around this all your life and you, it haven't worked for you yet. What makes you think it's going to work for you now? That was the that's the way the devil stop you from receiving your healing. And on the other hand, the angel on your on your other shoulder is saying, "Son, you have received the power to become the sons of God." And in him, all things are possible through him that love us. Amen. All things are possible through him that love us. Then he said, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. So if God has given us everything that we need to be healed, then what is keeping us from being healed? It's unbelief. Fear that if we will truly believe God, that we will be talked about or criticized because we're thinking we got to have it right now. I, we, we, we need an instant healing right now. Some healings is not instant. That mostly is considered as a miracle when it's instant. And miracles, is, 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 is they, they happen, but they happen when God allow them to happen. But let me tell you something. Your faith is, is available all the time, 24 hours a day. Your faith is available 24 hours a day. 
you don't have to wait for a miracle when you use your faith. Your faith can bring you to that place of healing. Your faith can bring you to that place of deliverance. Your faith can bring you to the place of, of inner peace. Amen. Let's go now back to John, back to Mark, Gospel chapter 5. Amen. Let's go back now to Mark chapter 5. Look at verse number, verse number 25. Verse number 25. Amen. And and a certain woman which had an issue of blood. Come on. Stay with me now. You got to read with me. It's so important that you read with me. Because you see, if you read it with me, you're saying, Pastor, I believe that God has a word for me today. Amen. And if you're not reading right along with me, you might miss that word that God has for you today. You may miss that word. But if you're reading right along with me, God can speak to your heart and he can cause whatever it is that you believe him for to manifest just like that by the snap of your finger, just like that. So now let's look at Mark chapter five once again. Now, since I've got all you, got your Bibles now, that's good. I'm glad you did. Okay, Mark chapter five, verse number 25 says, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and was and was and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, but rather grew worse. Amen. So we see here that we see here that this woman, she went to all the doctors that she could find trying to get healed. In other words, uh, what I'm going to say right now, you might you might I hope that you receive it in the right way. But no matter how much money you have, you can't buy your healing. Amen. No matter how many doctors you can go to, no matter no matter how much education they have, you can't buy your healing. Amen. They can coach you in the right direction which you should go if they have any insight on that particular situation at all. They can coach you in the right direction, but Jesus Christ is your ultimately is your ultimate healer. Amen. He's your healer. Amen. Not the doctors. They can't heal you. They can focus you in the right direction if they choose to. Amen. But God said in his word in John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus answered and said unto them, I am the way, the truth and the life. Notice what he said, truth and the life. Then he said, no man cometh to the Father but by me, but by me. Amen. So when I come to God, I want to have my ducks in line. So I got to have my Bible and I got to be able to uh, bring my concerns to God through his word. Amen. Because see, he's obligated himself to honor his word. Amen. Amen. He's obligated himself to honor his word. And when he honor his word, that means that we have brought to his attention what he has said in his word. And when we bring it to his attention, now we have God's attention. Amen. Because we have brought him into remembrance of what he has said. And by doing so, now we have his attention because he said in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 20 that he will, that, that, that he will, he will confirm the word with signs following. Amen. That he will confirm the word with signs following. So when we bring his word back to his remembrance, now he has an obligation. How you doing, Judy? He has an obligation to honor his own word. To honor his own word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, it's that's why it's so important that we when we when we got these when we're hearing these messages that we need to have our Bible to read right along with us so that the word can speak to your heart the will of God. You see, because faith comes where the will of God is known. Amen. Faith comes where the will of God is known. And that's why it's so important because you see, the word of God is the will of God. And the will of God is the word of God. You got to understand that. That's why you got to you got to take the word. And you got to when the preacher is preaching, Amen. And if that's if he's preaching something that you 
are believing for, then you need to be going right along with him in that word and sharing that which you are believing for. Amen. Because God wants to make all things good for you. He wants you to walk in divine health. He wants you to enjoy life and that more abundantly. He wants the peace of God that's a passive all understanding to keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Why? Because faith comes where the will of God is known. Hallelujah. Faith comes where the will of God is known. Are you ready to release your faith right now? I have, I've been with you now for an hour. Amen. Now, I'm ready right now to release my faith with you. Are you ready to release your faith with me right now? Amen. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I believe today is my breakthrough day. It's my day of healing. I purpose in my heart right now at 12.43 a.m. in the morning. I receive my healing. Right now at 12.43 a.m. I receive my healing. Now, whatever the time zone that you're in right now, that's the time that you receive your healing. Amen. That's the time you receive your healing. Amen. And, and I want you to constantly bring it back to God's attention because you see, he has already purchased it. He says in Isaiah, by his stripes, you are healed. He says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that you were healed. Amen. So if you are healed and you were healed, that means you is healed. Amen. So you just got to believe that. And you got to believe the fact that Christ has already paid the price for your healing. He took stripes upon his back for your healing. Amen. It's, your, it's up to you now. You got to receive what Christ has already done for you. And you got to receive it by faith. You got to receive it by faith. Because you see, there's nothing that is going on in your body that, listen to me, folks. There's nothing that is going on in your body that God can't correct. He created that body and he knows how to bring correction to that body. I know that for a fact. I used to be very sick. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any insurance. I had, all I had was a lot of pain. A lot of pain. And I was lying in my bed, crying like a baby. I was hurting so bad. And God spoke to me very harshly. He said, get up and read your Bible. And I looked around, tried to find out who was talking to me. I thought somebody was trying to play a game. But it was the Lord. And he told me to get up and read my Bible. And I got up and started to read my Bible. And he opened the Bible with me to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Can I take you over to the book of Mark, chapter 16? This is going to be, I'm, this is going to be where I'm going to close at. Amen. Mark, chapter 16. You need to turn your Bible with me to Mark, chapter 16. Hallelujah. God bless you too, Sister Heidi. I, I received that. Amen. Mark, chapter 16. And it says, and, G, and he said unto them, verse number 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. Jesus is talking to us. He's talking to us. Amen. Look at, look at verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. If they... they, they if they shall take up serpent, if they drink any dead thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. See, Jesus is talking to us and he's given us divine instructions on how to release our faith for restoration of our body, for, for restoring our bodies. Amen. 
Because sometimes you can't have someone praying for you. Amen. Because they don't know. They don't know. How to pray effectively. Some some people don't know how to pray effectively. So you got to be willing to hear the word of God. And ask God for the wisdom to understand his word. Then once you understand what God is saying. Apply what God is saying to you. Amen. That's what I did right here. And in and, and, and Mark chapter chapter 16, verse number 18, he said, verse number 18 says, and, and they shall take they shall take up serpent. If they drink any of the other things, it shall not hurt them. This now this latter part, this latter phrase right here said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Then I was saying, they shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Then I said, Well, who shall lay hands on the sick? Because I don't see I don't see referring to anyone right here. Who shall lay hands on the sick? Then he said, go back to verse number 17. Then I went back to verse number 17. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. So when I've read verse number 18, it, it focused me back on verse number 17 because I'm looking at the requirements of these signs shall follow them that believe. And everything that is listed from verse number six, from 17 to 18 is the things that follow those that believe. And so when I saw that, I said, Lord, you mean telling me that as a believer, I can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? And the Lord assured me. And how did he assure me? He assured me by me laying my own hands on my own body. Amen. I laid my own hands on my own body. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you said, Father, these signs shall follow them that believe. I said, I am a believer. My body is sick. I have two hands, and I'm laying my hands upon my body. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that sickness. I, I rebuke that pain, and I command it to leave my body right now in the name of Jesus. And glory to, lo and behold, within seconds, all that pain, all that sickness was gone from my body. And I've been walking in divine health ever since. And ever since then, I've been teaching this because I know that God's word works. If I thought, if I had any doubt concerning what I'm teaching you, folks, I would not be teaching you this. Amen. But I know that if you would believe the word of God, if you would trust me as I'm delivering this word to you, and if you will follow me, in your Bible through the scriptures that we're going to be that we talk about doing these doing these classes, Amen. This is just like this is this is healing school. This is healing school, Amen. Because I know I know that that you need to be you, your faith need to be established in this area, Amen. And once your faith is established in this area, you're going to get your healing. I know you will. I have no doubt about it, Amen. I have no doubt about you receiving your healing. The moment your faith is established in this area, you will receive your healing. I know that for a fact. Amen. I know that. And that's why I teach this so much. And that's why I'm, I want to encourage you when you, when I'm on here teaching this, you get your Bible and you go right along with me because it's just like you in Bible. It's just like you in healing, uh, in healing school. Amen. You in healing school. God wants you healed now. Now I'm going to release my faith right now for your healing. And those of you that have faith to be healed right now, I want you to stretch forth your hand toward mine and receive your healing also. Amen. I'm going to release my faith, but I want you to stretch forth your hand toward mine and I want you to receive your healing right now because Jesus wants to heal you right now. If you have faith to receive it, be it unto you according to your faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release my faith in connection with their faith. And I declare today your healing power is being released. Receive your healing now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. There it is. They're, they're go, they're, they're, the anointing is released the anointing is being is flowing out right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Amen. Receive it. There it is in Jesus' name. Amen. So y'all got to come back and join me now tomorrow night because I didn't finish my lesson in the book of Mark. Amen. So tomorrow night, y'all got to join me again at the same time. Are you, you with me, James? 
Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Amen. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Amen. And thank all of you. Thank you, uh, Miss Heidi, for joining me. Judy, thank you all for joining me today. And all of you that are with me on Live Me. Amen. Thank you all for joining today. Amen. Tomorrow night, I'm going to come back again and I'm going to bring you another word of encouragement concerning your health and your healing. Amen. God wants to heal you and he wants to heal you now. Thank you. Receive it by faith in Jesus' name. We love you guys. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed and prosperous day. And we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> God bless you all. We love you. Thank you all for joining us. Don't forget, tune us in tomorrow night. God bless you. Bye-bye.